Oh, honey, a package just arrived for you. Has it been put through the x-ray? Radiation test? Magic test? Any kind of heat signature? First off, I'm happy to see that my rigorous attention to detail and anal retentiveness is finally starting to rub off on you. And second, check, 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 and check. There will be no analyst popping out of this box. Although if it's Soma again, I wouldn't be opposed. All right then, let's see what's in there. Dear Fab Equestria, over the course of my research, I found minerals with all kinds of magical properties. Enclosed is one such magical stone. It's just a rock. Ah! What in Celestia's golden hoof cure? I don't know, but keep reading. Maybe there's an explanation. Okay, okay, okay. Enclosed is one such magical stone, but despite exhaustive research in my lab, I was unable to pinpoint its exact magical properties, which is why I decided to send it to Fob Equestria's labs, as I'm sure with all of your advancements in magical weaponry, someone is bound to know what this stone does. Please respond soon, Maud. Okay, shot in the dark, but I'm guessing she was working alone in her lab. And didn't have anyone to swap with, which is what this rock obviously does. Well, I'm gonna go talk to that crack research team of ours. See if we can get this reversed before too many ponies see us like this. Um... Is this a bad time? Like, I can sneak in any other time. It honestly wasn't that hard, so... We'll deal with you in a little bit once we get this straightened out. But for now, I'll be right back. You two can probably pass the time reviewing something. Maybe I'll try bossing around your troops while I'm like this. Could be fun. So... Brand? Yep. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be a weird one. So, do you think the princesses should know about this? You don't want this to turn into a royal pro- Not in the mood for puns. How about we go watch your waifu boss around those soldiers? That might be fun. <laughs> yes, it would, let's go. So this opens with Twilight having freakout number 86 because the map can now apparently call people other than those in the Council of Friendship. No rules anymore. Unless it only calls ponies that know about the table, but yeah, this does throw a wrench into a lot of our assumptions. You would think that only those a part of the Council get called. Well, there's probably a reason for it. I just got here! Ugh, I'll be right back. Or you know, maybe the Royal Sisters aren't seeing eye to eye on something. No! That's just crazy! Luna and Celestia would never fight! Again? So we're actually addressing the relationship instead of it being hand-waved? Great! Only seven seasons later! Oh, you're back already? Where's the friendship problem? Here. Are you aware that you live in a very hot desert? Well, there's nothing wrong here, right, sister? No. Everything's perfect as usual, sister. I think someone's salty that she doesn't have a throne. Meant to rule together my flank. Seriously, it's been how many years in the show? Like, at least two. And no one's gotten around to giving the Moon Lady a throne of her own? Wasn't the whole spiel with her turning into Nightmare Moon that she was feeling underappreciated? I feel like we're not learning a lesson here. Yeah, I remember that Lauren Faust's original intention with Celestia was to make her a queen. A single throne could work if that's what was established, and the more I think about it, it would make the following plotline a little more juicy. So Starlight goes to the guest room and finds Twilight possessing an inanimate object to chat. I'd expect a hologram or magic video screens or magic potion Skype like from the movie, but apparently this is the easiest way to communicate long distance? Oh wow, going full Harry Potter with this. Hi Blissey, what's up? Uh, Sorry, can't stay. Got a review to do. Bye! Can I make another appointment? Hang on, just gotta check something on my phone. Aha! Hasbro.com, available now for $19.99. I think the problem might be between Celestia and Luna. Oh no, that's terrible! I mean, what makes you say that? You know how some ponies say nothing's wrong, but you can tell something's definitely wrong? Oh, you mean talking to women. I'm fine. We're not fine! Despite being incredibly offensive to yaks, that manslater has been a lifesaver. True, and you better also pray that Ari doesn't remember that when you switch back. Thank you so much for breakfast, princess. I can't believe you cook it yourself. Of course, Starlight. I really enjoy doing it. And it's to make sure that no one poisons my food. 
But Luna walks in and declines the food that Celestia slaved over. She is like this every morning. Dude, Tia, why are you just throwing out those delicious pancakes? You could give them to literally anyone else. Incoming guests, the royal guard, servants, heck, I'll take them. I'm sorry, I'm still dehydrated from going back to that desert and I'm very hungry. So, I think Luna may be hurting her sister's feelings, without even realizing it. Boy, ain't that the root causes of most fights. I can count on one hand the amount of fights that were due to genuine malice. So, one? Low hanging fruit. Still tasty, like those pancakes I still want! Princess Luna's waiting for you, miss. <laughs> Good luck, Starlight! Such a thorough inspection, Mr. Royal Guard, who is charged with keeping people safe in a government building! And yet, exactly what I was expecting from him. He's trying, he's just really, really bad at his job. Thank you for summing up our entire lives! But it appears that Luna's been lacing the walls with lavender to help people sleep better. And it's true. According to Restonic.com, researchers monitored sleep cycles and found that lavender increased slow-wave sleep, instrumental for slowing heartbeat, relaxing muscles, and overall, the subjects slept more soundly on nights with lavender than without. And it appears that Celestia hasn't noticed. So, both princesses are hurting each other without realizing it. And instead of talking about it, they're just getting colder and more distant. Indeed. Many times people are afraid of confrontation and speaking their feelings and it causes relationships to deteriorate. On the other hand, though, we get people who overcorrect and speak their feelings with no restraint or filter, thus making the situation worse. Seriously, people, there is a life outside of Twitter. And there's Celestia and Luna, so it's not like you can just confront them. Actually, that's exactly what I was going to do. What? Are you crazy? Well, this is Starlight, so probably. And that is the reason that Starlight was called. The pony with no boundaries and phenomenal cosmic power was the perfect solution to this, and the map knew it. Knew it? Like, the map is cognizant? We see later that the Tree of Harmony has a consciousness, and the map came from the Tree of Harmony, and it's been implied throughout the series that the tree has some degree of perception and influence over the world. Makes sense to me. I also love the character continuity nods here. Twilight does have an idol worship problem. Sorry, it's just you said princesses and aren't the best in the same sentence, and it's making me nervous! And she does overblow the worst case scenario. The last time the princesses fought, Luna turned into Nightmare Moon, and Princess Celestia had to banish her for a thousand years! That can't happen again! So it's the next morning, and that batch of pancakes looks so much better! Strawberries can go die a horrible, painful death, they are a terrible fruit! Indeed, and by horrible death, you must mean by digestion in my belly! I love berries. And Luna walks in, so Starlight decides that this is the best time to confront them on their behavior. Uh, Starlight? Sweetie? As someone who works the night shift, I can tell you that mornings are the absolute worst time to lecture someone. And I'm proven right, as we get on the verge of the Royal Cantalot voice very quickly. Another reason that direct confrontation is not always the wisest option. Many times confronting it directly, going in without a plan, often escalates the situation into something worse. Hmm, and how would you have handled the situation, Scorcher MD? Waited until Luda wasn't a grumpy Gus and taken a direct moderator slash mediator role. Or sent them to the rooms to cool off for a half hour and then make them come back. I don't think you have the authority nor the power to enforce that. But she does! Enough! There! Now you'll know exactly what it's like to be each other. And at this point, we can guess the entire plot from here. It's the Freaky Friday, walk a mile in my shoes, grass is greener on the other side sort of plot. But this time it's with Royal Demigod, so it gets a thumbs up from me. It may have been extreme, but uh, I think it's still a good idea. What? <laughs> she dead. It's easy to judge Starlight's admittedly impulsive action here, but at this point, things were only going to get worse before they got better, so she really had no choice but to bring down the hammer. Also, nice subtle continuity nod to her magic being able to alter cutie marks. The princesses agree to the switch, confident in their lives being the harder ones, even though Luna's getting saddled with a back-to-back -back shift. Oof. Good choice. Not that you had one. <laughs> 
I'm gonna stop talking now. Why is everyone so afraid of the princesses? It's not like they've actually punished anyone. Yet. So we move to Twilight Freakout number 87. Are you okay in there? I'm good. Just, uh, reading an exciting book. <laughs> He's gonna think I'm nuts. He's not the only one. He's not the only one. Oh, come on! Then Luna announces to the populace that she's gonna be taking over for Celestia. I assure you, I am more than capable of handling all of Celestia's <laughs> duties. You laughed when you said duties, Luna. You know what you did. Huh. Luna's a fan of potty humor. Confirmed. And Luna's quickly finding out that the life of a public figure ain't all it's cracked up to be, and that one mistake can make or break your public image. Also, Luna is sad, and that makes me sad. Ready for the town hall? <sighs> oh no. Are we really going to have to listen to pony politics? Ugh, this is gonna be so boring! Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't mind hearing about how their political system works. I'm always down for some good world building. So am I, but not this kind of world building. I don't think anyone wants to sit on a political discussion when people actually come to this cartoon to get away from it. I'm glad that's settled. <laughs> that only took three hours. Oh, that got heated, didn't it? Still on for golf. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you made it to the end of the day. Yay? Or they'll just skip all that. Bless you, writers. Aw, crud. But nice little attention to detail with that lavender wilting. And we go to Celestia, who feels confident that she can get through Luna's ahem duties before she realizes that she has to do it alone. All right, every pony's asleep. You're talking to yourself, Celestia, but there's no pony else to talk to. <laughs> uh oh, extrovert alert. And we see some of those dreams. Uh, we have Fluttershy on a giant bunny. Betcha that's Rainbow dreaming that she's daring do. Either Cadence or Flurry Heart is a party animal. Discord's being silly. Pinky's being silly. AJ. Oh. That. That hurts. Whichever Apple family member is dreaming that needs a hug. Badly. <sighs> as much as I love these Easter eggs, they're also kind of frustrating. Friendship is magic is a very weird method of world building. Ever since the very first episode, they dropped all these interesting little breadcrumbs and potential story beats. That's part of the reason it's drawn in a large amount of the adult audience and why the fan fiction and analysis community have flourished. Unfortunately, the show doesn't follow up on these interesting tidbits until years later, to the point where it almost feels like a carrot and stick. I can't tell you how long people had been begging for an episode starring Celestia, or the episode where they reveal AJ's parents. It took well into the latter end of MLP's life cycle for us to get those, and for many people, they just got sick of waiting. That being said, I don't believe the world building is of absolute importance to the show. I still watch MLP and love it because I think the characters, the humor, and the morals are the most important aspects of MLP, and for the most part, they still do those things very well. But I can also understand why many longtime fans have drifted away due to feeling like they were not getting what they originally saw in the show. It's why we slowly shifted from an analysis community to a reviewing community. And I know that some people are going to dismiss this critique saying it's a kid's show, so treat it as such, but I don't feel that's a fair assessment. If this was a kid's show, then why put in this interesting stuff? Why put in the effort if you're just going to dismiss it as it's for kids? There's plenty of Disney movies that deal with, like, lust, murder, and other adult subjects. People on DeviantArt love exploring the world of The Lion King, for some reason. Heck, Ink Rose was like 14 when she started her Equestria Origins and Applejack Parent Headcanons video, so you can't say that kids don't care about this stuff. They latch on to these tidbits just as much as we do, so adding these details but then getting mad if we question them is trying to have your cake and eat it too. And the episodes that do follow up on these little details, like The Perfect Pair, Discord and Harmony, and, spoiler, this one, are ones that are nearly universally loved. It makes me wonder why they don't continue doing it. Anyway, Celestia drops into Starlight's dream and finds Starlight feeling a bit of pressure over her situation. Like if she fails, then the worst will happen. She's more like that other purple horse than she thinks. Don't worry, Starlight. I know how to handle Nightmare Moon. Pawn it off on Twilight? Get trapped in the moon? Seriously, if you know how to handle her, then why didn't you do it the first two times? But then we wouldn't get our allegory for Celestia as God. Or this entire show's existence, for that matter. True. But hey, Nightmare Moon makes a rather unceremonious entry. Kind of appropriate. Everyone loves Discord, Chrysalis, Evil Starlight. Nightmare Moon's just kind of there. Yes, but can you handle... <laughs> well, that's new! 
This can't be. If Luna can turn into Nightmare Moon, you can absolutely turn into me. Flawless logic. Terrifying flawless logic. Fan fiction writers, to your keyboards! Deep inside, you know how powerful you are. You don't need Luna. That's not true. Even when we were apart, I knew I needed her. Oh, please! You don't need any pony. You can do whatever you want. And all you have to do is get rid of any pony who stands in your way. That raises some uncomfortable questions. Uh, how much of this is actually Celestia? Is that what Starlight thinks her struggles are? Or are these her actual struggles? I'm reminded of an episode of Justice League, A Better World. It was an alternate universe where Flash died and Superman went all dictator on the world and established the Justice Lords. The Justice Lords invaded the real world, the two groups fought, and the Justice League won the day. At the end, OG Superman reveals to Flash that in the back of his mind, he's always had those temptations and they make sense. A man of Superman or Celestia's power? The temptation to do whatever you want without consequences would be overwhelming. It could take just one bad day to make you snap. With Superman, it was the death of the Flash. With Celestia, who knows what it could be. I really like the animated Superman comparison to Celestia and now I want to see Celestia do a world of cardboard speech. Fanfic writers, to your- I have it right here. Bear did it a while ago. Link in the description. Well then. Mine! So much black. We get it, you're sad. Even when evil, still the roast master. So Celestia realizes she needs a bit of help and searches Luna's dream. Why don't you want us to go on our field trip? I don't... Why is that such a common occurrence in people's dreams? Well, according to studies, it usually happens if you grind your teeth during sleep and the sensations trigger alterations in your dream. It happens more frequently in the anxious or depressed. Check and check for Luna. What was I thinking? I'm never going with my gut again! If you don't fix this soon, it could have a grave consequence on Starlight's psyche. It could have a grave consequence on Starlight's psyche? That raises even more questions! The way she said it, it sounded like someone who learned that from experience. Plus, I don't think anyone's given Luna a manual on dreamscaping, so this statement implies that Luna's failed helping some ponies dreams at some point, and it permanently hurt them. If so... Who? And damaging Starlight's psyche. Now I'm imagining a Starlight that doesn't do anything out of fear of screwing it up. Someone so afraid of her own power that she just shuts down. She'd be like Mob crossed with Raven. So Celestia and Luna realize that each person has their own problems, you know, the standard a mile in my shoes moral. You can't destroy me. I'm everything you want to be. No, you're not. You are not real, and you will never exist again! Again? I think she's referring to the Daybreaker existing in this moment. I really doubt this has actually happened before. Yeah, let's hope. You did it! Only because you were here. I don't know how you do this alone. So, um, did you talk to yourself? Um, a little. That is the most normal sounding Luna I've ever heard, and I love it. I love these little moments where they act like regular people, like when Luna makes Celestia a terrible breakfast. They are delicious. <laughs> I know that face. They're not. I know you have to be perfect for every pony else, and you do an amazing job, but you don't have to do it for me. That's nice. I'm not going to be snarky here. That's just nice. The map was wise to send you Starlight. No pony else would have been so bold as to do what you did. That's a nice way of saying I came dangerously close to messing everything up. Sometimes problems are small enough to solve by a simple conversation. Sometimes they need a sledgehammer. Depends on the situation. Wow! I can't wait to tell Twilight! I already know! I mean, I don't know everything. I just got here to bring you your toothbrush! And people think that Twilight wasn't the same pony after she got wings. Ha! Also, the purple and the green, I will bet you a million bucks that that's Spike's toothbrush. Oh, uh, by the way, there's a field trip you need to make happen and a <clears throat> timber wolf issue you need to address. What? Oh, look, there's the sun. Time for me to turn in. Well, now it's Celestia's turn to pull double shift. Just desserts. And that was a royal wedding. And that was a royal problem. Sure, the moral was one we've seen before. Every kid's show does the mile in my shoes moral, so the fact that it came this late in the show's runtime is surprising, to say the least. Not complaining, just observing. But it's what they 
do with this setup that makes this episode so great. Even though Starlight is more of a plot device this time around, she has some great lines and her being the episode's catalyst without making her look bad took a lot of writing skill. We got to see more of Celestia and Luna's dynamic and relationship, more of their lives, more of their personalities, and more of their struggles. It was awesome seeing another side to them instead of the dark, serious, sometimes childlike Luna or the enigmatic, calm, occasionally mischievous Celestia. We got some very natural world building that didn't interfere with or contradicted established lore. It raised some questions about the world, but the fun questions, not the questions about plot holes or continuity errors, but the questions that make us interested in the show's lore. The questions that made a lot of people gravitate to the show in the first place. This is a top two episode of the season for me. It's either this one or a perfect pair that takes the top marks of the season. And it was everything I was hoping for when I heard a Celestia and Luna episode was coming. The dialogue between the sisters was top notch, perfectly portraying that sibling feeling with the baggage of their long lives added to it. Starlight had some great character moments. The battle between Daybreaker and Nightmare Moon was enjoyable. And the moral, despite being an old standby, was fantastically executed. And the implications that arose from this episode are the kind of thing that keep me up at night thinking of fan theories. 9.5 out of 10, would watch 10 more times. Alright, I talked to Mod and found the solution. Really? How? Boop. That was anticlimactic. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, honey. Well, you got the thing fixed. Fantastic. I'm gonna be on my way. K. thanks. Bye. Ah, uh, no you don't. Party howitzer? Eventually, but I have a better idea. This is total horse hockey. Them's the brakes, kid. We take petty revenge way too seriously. Walk a mile in my shoe. Hey! Just walk a mile in my shoe. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoe.